Hello, sweet friends and crafters. Welcome to Carol's Craft Cottage. I am delighted to have you join me today as I'm going to share with you a tutorial on how to make these post-it notebook um, or pad covers. And you can see here I have them in the middle. And I picked up a tool that really helps me to do the book binding so easily. I'm so excited about it. I have always been intimidated by making book covers. And I guess the more you do, the better you get at it. But I found a tool that makes it so much easier and everything comes out nice and even and smooth. And I'm going to share that with you today. So I have these little booklets and I think they are just adorable. This here is a old um, cottage cuts die. I'm not sure if this is available or not. I'll check it. If it is, I'll link it in the description box below. And these, of course, are the Spellbinders poinsettia. And then I have little uh, sprigs in here. And I'll show you these dies in a minute. And then I used little uh, diamond dots to decorate the outside of this. And this is really, really cute. I love these. I do have a older Sizzix die by, I think it's uh, Brenda, is it Brenda Walton? That makes the covers, but it's not sturdy like this. This is just a um, sticker I had in my uh, stash that I cut out with a die. And this is a Christmas one. And then this is a fall one. This is also a sticker that I had and I used uh, some this actually is another Cottage Cuts die that is no longer available. This uh, little sunflower and then the leaves. So let me go ahead and show you what I used. Please use what you have in your stash. Um, yeah, I'm sure you have something comparable. So I used this Leaf Mini, the Maple Leaf Mini, and the Oak Leaf Mini. Now you can use the Sizzix uh, leaf die from Tim Holtz and you'll get the same size leaves as that. Uh, for the Christmas ones I used this Sizzix die from Tim Holtz. It's 661597 and for this one I used this little uh, twig one right here and this is called Holiday Greens. I used this circle die to cut out images if it was on uh, paper that I had and also for the background. So I'll show you the one we're going to make. So I uh, mounted my sticker onto this piece right here. So that's what I did. I cut this one and the gold with this circle die and the size of that is for the first one it is a two and three eighths inch circle and the one after that is two and three quarters and then the scalloped one is a three inch so this is the scallop die that I used so use what you have in your stash so we're going to go ahead and create one of these little book covers. Let me get this out of the way. All right. To prepare your paper, you're going to need um, the background paper. So this right here to cover up your chipboard. So you're going to cut one five by ten inches. That's what we're going to use to put our chipboard on. And you're going to cut the chipboard at three and a half by three and a half, two pieces. And then you're going to need a three and a half by five eighths inch for the um, piece right here. Okay. Then you'll need some designer paper. This is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. You'll need two pieces and then uh I also cut another five eighths inch uh, by three and a quarter for the um, spine of the book. And for the inside, 
you are going to cut a three and a quarter by seven and seven eighths inch piece. And then you can see that I distress inked around the edges on my paper. So let's go ahead and put this together. Now this is the tool that I picked up on uh, AliExpress. I will leave a link to it below. This is what helps me make my book bindings so much more easily. I have now the confidence that I needed to do <laughs> to make these books using this tool. So what I do is I put that on the very edge of these two sides of the paper. And I'm going to take my chipboard and I'm going to glue this. I'm going to glue this right up into the corner here. So this is an inch wide. Then I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to put it this way and put that edge right up to the edge of the chipboard. And then I'm going to glue this little piece for the spine. And I'm going to put it right there, right up against it. Then I'm going to lift this and I'm going to put it up against here again so that I can glue this second piece of chipboard. here and we're going to press it down. I can take this out and we're going to press this down. Now I did make my uh, backing sheet a little bit bigger just in case. So I'm going to put this up against here so I have a one inch excess all around. So I'm going to just draw that line like that and I'm going to cut this piece off. All right, then I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to use this right here. So this cuts these ends off perfect so that it's not too much and not too little. Okay, and I'm going to flip it this way. Put it on this side, square it off, draw that. Then I'll flip it over so I can do this side and this side. And then I'm all done with this tool, so I'll put it to the side. Now we're just going to take these ends off. All right. Now I like to hold my book cover like this and just run it across my desktop to get that paper to start folding up into the inside. I'm going to do this, this end, and then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this so that all four sides are now going up into the inside. Now, before I fold it in, I found that if I gave this a good 
um, score on the spine that I had a nice line for my spine. So I'm going to center this into the middle of this and I'm just gonna do a score line. And the same with this. And that's all I do. And when I flip this over, you can see how I have the score lines here and I just fold it over and I don't get any cracked paper and I just get a nice smooth spine like that. Comes out really nice. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip these, not all the way down, but like seven eighths of the way down on this inch on both sides. Now we're going to fold this up, get this going here. And we're going to put some glue on that. So with this little tool that helps me make this nice and straight and everything, I can't wait to do the Tonics uh, Constantina uh, box that I have done before and have been afraid to do the tutorial because um, I always struggled with making these types of covers. So I'll be having that tutorial at some point before Christmas for sure. So here we are, we're just pushing everything up. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna push this end down here and this end down here. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and push this paper down into the creases. And then I'm going to come and do this side. All right, we're going to push this up, this, and this. your bone folder get a good stick all the way across then push this down and then push this down on this side and then run your bone folder in that crease to get the paper to go down in there now we're going to do the ends And we're just going to fold it over like that and see how nice you get an even well, corners. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and just press with my bone folder. So like I said, it gives me the confidence to make these book, book covers <laughs> that I was really lacking with that one tool. It's so cool. Just fold it over like that. And again, you can see I got great corners. And we're going to push it down. Okay, now we are going to work on the inside. And I have this piece again. Again, this is a three and a quarter by seven and seven eighths. So what I do is I lay it down on here. And then I go to the center and I kind of mark it with my bone folder where the 
uh, creases are. And then I'm going to take it again to my score scoreboard because I find that if I score it, it's so much easier. It will just fall into place where I want it to go. So I just score it. So we're going to go ahead and crease that. So don't forget, I didn't do it here because I've already done it, but if you want to distress ink, make sure you distress ink before you glue it down. So we're going to put glue on this. this so your crease that score line you're just going to put it in the crease on that binding and then I'm going to press it in like that and I'll put the crease on the other side and I'm a little off here put it in there and then put it in there and smooth it. Get a good stick. Then I'm going to take my post-it note pad We're going to put some glue on the back of the last sheet of paper on here. And we are going to glue it in the center. Now, if you want to make a pen holder, you can. You would have enough room. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close that. You can see what we've got so far. Now I put a tie on mine because I decorated, I heavily decorated these. You could actually put a piece of paper that comes over the top and closes with a like Velcro or a magnet if you want to, but I used a uh, ribbon. So I'm going to attach my ribbon now before I put my covers on. So I just eyeball it. Let me see what size this is. Let's see. This is about 16 inches is what I cut for. This is 7 8 inch wide uh, organza ribbon that you get at Hobby Lobby. So I cut it in half and I'm going to attach it one piece right here. You could go around the whole thing. I thought, thought I'd try to save some ribbon by just doing this. Um, I need some tape. I always tape mine just so uh, it holds it. Another means of securing it. I'm going to flip to the other side. And we'll attach this one, making sure it's even. And I'm going to put a piece of tape over that as well. It just helps to hold it down and secure it a little bit more. Okay, now make sure we're going the right way, yes. <laughs> we're going to attach our covers. Again, these are three and a quarter by three and a quarter, and they have Distress Ink around the edges. And 
And we're going to center this. So I had my uh, granddaughters over uh, Saturday, Saturday night and Sunday morning, and they wanted to do nails. <laughs> they wanted to paint nails, so we all painted nails. So if you see my nails, I have a different color on each finger. That is not me. <laughs> I have to take it off. But that's what uh, we did Saturday night. They really enjoyed it. We did toes and, and fingers. <laughs> And I talked them out of orange and I forgot the other color. Oh, orange and yellow. I talked them out of those colors on my fingernails. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. My granddaughter also likes to uh, put on those uh, masks that you get at the Dollar Tree, you know, for uh, skin treatment. She loves putting those on. I don't know why. <laughs> So we did that too. We had a spa spa night. So uh, I've got the covers on both sides, the spine piece, and now I'm going to tie this up. Got a little bit extra to take off of here. Now we're going to take our focal point, which is this cute uh, pumpkin sticker. And you're going to go ahead and put this on these foam pads. I get these in the uh, tool section at uh, Dollar Tree. So I use that for behind the pumpkin and then the next layer. And then in between the gold and the uh, scalloped, I use this, which is pretty thin. And then one, I'm gonna do one more layer of foam. I like all that dimension, but it's not over, not overly done. We're going to put some on the back of this. All right. And we're going to center that. And I'm going to bring my flowers. These are some old recollection flowers that I had in my stash. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to take this leaf. Place it up here. Behind that leaf. There we go. And then we're going to take this one. This is, this by the way, is one of the Tim Holtz leaves. So you see that you have the right size if you don't have those cottage cuts ones. Then we're going to take this flower. I'm going to glue it right there. This leaf here and this flower right on top of there. Then we have one more thing to do. I 
and we're going to put five diamond dots here. Make sure we got them straight, pretty straight there. And we're gonna put five on this side. And make sure that's straight. And there we have it. Cute little gift to give someone. Really super adorable. So what I'm going to do is I will leave links to uh, whatever dies I can find in the description box below. And of course, as always, I will leave all the measurements for cutting the designer paper and the backing and all that in the description box below. If you have any questions, please Leave me a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, that you will be making some of these for Christmas and fall. And if you haven't done so, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel as it helps my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification button so you'll be notified when I have a video. And until next time, Remember to sprinkle kindness like confetti wherever you go. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.